computer, lights. Good morning, everybody, and happy Thursday. I have this weird thing going on where I've got a... Oh, oh, yeah, so sometimes things try to dock on my bottom monitor, and they pass up into this top monitor, and then the header bar is right underneath the footer bar, so I can't actually grab it again to clear the <laughs> thing. Oh, no, it's so horrible. Um, okay, so today is watercolor Thursday because I was gone yesterday. So we're going to head on over to the other camera and hopefully, hopefully, somebody hasn't knocked the camera around. It looks like it's fine. What's interesting to me is you can see these lines, that, the lines that are kind of going up there. I originally thought, those lines were interference because that camera back there is kind of old or something like that. But now I'm kind of going through this and noticing that those lines are there when I use my camera from my phone. Makes me wonder what the interference is. Because I took a picture of this last night and posted it on the internet and it was just as messed up <laughs> as it is here. Okay, so those of you who are familiar with George know that I don't actually put water into my water pails until I'm ready to start. So, I'm going to put water in my container, my brush container. Get some fresh water. So, I'll have some fresh water. And there we go. I'm going to start over here. It's a good day for this. <clears throat> I'm going to go on ahead and bring up my iPad. And I'm going to log in to uh, our show. Because I can't actually read the comments over there when it's over there because it's way far away. So unless somebody else joins me today, just gonna be me, myself, and I, which is fine. I don't care about that. Oh man. Go. I see I have never logged into Facebook before. Hang on, we're going to YouTube. And all I'm doing is just trying to find my old channel here. And, man, I haven't used my iPad in a while. Find my channel. Okay. I must be doing something wrong. because I'm finding it difficult 
There we go. This shouldn't be this difficult, but it is. All right. I'm going to plug it in. Boy, I'm pushing all the buttons. I'm messing up all the things. Click to live. Right. Look at us being live. All right. This is us right now. What you're seeing now is now. Okay, guys. Now at least I can see when people tell me or text me here. All right, let's get started on this thingamajigger. Burger jigger. So one of the things that I'm gonna to try to do here is I'm gonna to try to use a flat brush for this. So I've got a, a self-watering flat brush that I use. This is a Tombow water brush. And I like to use these water brushes because uh, they're easy to use and stuff like that. This one's really neat too. Uh, it's actually empty, completely empty of water. So I'm going to go put water in it and I'll be right back. The thing about watercolors is you have water everywhere and not a drop to drink. So we put water in the small brush and water in the big brush. Well, small brush gets water too. And this is just a really fine point. Kind of see how that's a fine point there. Uh, so, okay. <clears throat> we have this picture that I've been working on for a while. Um, and I'm going to try to paint it up today. So we're going to take it and paint it up. Let's see here. I'm going to take my clean water bucket and put it over here so that it's easy to get to. Okay. Now, I will admit to being somewhat nervous about this because I'm worried that I'm going to mess it up. So I'm going to first kind of get an idea of where, what, what other people have done. So we're going to do an, a search for enterprise painting watercolor. We're just going to look at some. Now, some of these look kind of like they're photographs that somebody has splattered watercolor paint on. And that's not what I'm looking for because I want to actually kind of get that watercolor feel that's not in fact sort of a, a problem child here on this. So we'll see what's going on. Let's see anybody talking over here yet. Okay. It's an interesting painting of the moon there. And I find it always interesting when people paint in watercolors, Kirk, Spock, and McCoy. Always good. But when I see people do uh, Star Trek watercolors in a lot of ways, uh, what I'll see often is 
I'll see them use interesting color variations, yellows or greens to indicate hall color. And I actually have this new blue that I really want to try out, right? So first things first, let's go ahead and put that blue in so we can talk about it. This is my new blue. It's right here. And we're going to use this brush for it. We're going to just, this is that blue that Pepper made. So it's a pepper blue. We're going to add some water, some of this blue. So Pepper made this blue uh, a couple of, or last week on the show. I'm kind of curious as to how it's going to play out, right? So it's kind of a, a battleship blue is really kind of what I'm after. So we got sort of this guy going over here, and he's kind of battleship blue. And you can see on the card here, kind of what it's looking like, right? Because we're kind of looking, looking kind of like that, right? Now it's not dry yet, so it's going to take it a bit. It's a darker blue. And it definitely has sort of dimension to it that I like. So it's got some dimensionality. It's good. All right. Moving along. <sighs> Cross your fingers, guys. Let's hope we don't screw this up a lot. Search my photos. Let's go see what we get. If I search my photos and see if I've got anybody who's done watercolors recently that look good. I like the fact that it, it seems to think that my cover painting is a watercolor. So we're looking through my old paintings to see uh, what other what other audience or what other artists have done watercolors that I dig, so they can kind of match their style. And that's going to play this actually. Hey, some artist named me. Some other ones. Now, I've done sort of, this is from, um, whoop, there we go. This is from uh, the Book Federation over there. And I like the way that they use sort of golds and, and things like that to kind of indicate hall color there, too. Um, and that's kind of cool. I thought about that, but then somebody else did recently a watercolor that was a lot more. Uh, it was the. Uh, there we go. Now she's working in a much larger scale, but I like the way she portrayed the D. So I'm thinking maybe I'll go here. And kind of do this. So we'll go ahead and start with that. I'll put this guy right over here. And I'm going to kind of try to mix up some of those colors. So we're going to think about the highlights. 
pilot's going to be along the, the cell tops here and there and through here. So the highlights for this are not going to be, there's not going to be any shine for it. Um, for this, for this hull, I'm looking at more of a gray. So I'm going to be looking more at my grays over here. Uh, this black, this deep's gray, right? So that's what we're going to do. Right, that's a very blue-gray gray, but it'll work. We're going to be very light with it. Okay. I'm going to start just right along here, along the bottom of the hall. Right. Tap in some hall lines. I want under light under here, so I'm only going to do like right into this row right here. I'm going to do the same thing with the secondary hull. This is also known as the engineering hull. I'm going to go on ahead and go all the way up to the saucer on this one because it's going to be in the dark, right? So it's partially shadowed by what's going on up here. And that'll give the secret to good art is being aware of the light and where the light falls on your subject. Same thing here. The warp missile is going to cast a shadow. So I'm going to want to make sure I can sort of see what's going on. Also known as the nacelle strut. You do the nacelle strut. Okay, I think I'm funny, but it's all good. Anyway, so the nacelle strut here is casting a shadow across the hull. I like that. Right. Boom. Now we're just kind of following the general hull color here. And that's going to be this Davies Gray. Now, if you're wondering, I printed this painting out in spe specifically in blue. So the line work is in blue. Paint 
painting is hairy enough. Dang it. Using the flat brush here to give me good angles. I'll be able to turn my angle and I'll be able to pivot the, the brush whenever I need to and things like that. So most part, the Discovery Enterprise has kept sort of one uniform sort of color going for her. much darker. I, I put more paint in here to give it more solid color. That looks darker. It's in the front of that that engineering hall, that sort of section there. We're getting much darker. And that's intentional. I want more dark. Now when we get out onto the the saucer itself, I'm gonna put more water. cognizant of where the light is. The light's going to strike against the hall here. So this back section there. So I don't want to interrupt that too much. I'm just giving patchiness to this hall. So I'm going to try to stay within the lines to some degree. And that'll give it that feel that it's got different plates and different angles. Uh, what model builders call traditionally as teching. Darkness so of this over here. specifically hitting the whole place as much as possible to try to kind of get that feel going for it. area and highlight and some darkness out here and have to admit the flat brush definitely is a level up I've been kind of using 
other brushes that are more uh, round, a round brush or a point brush. And it is difficult to get the control that I'm looking for. So I am quite a bit enjoying this flat brush. And it's kind of cool. The same thing here on this side. Now, this side of the ship is going to be affected by the planet behind there. So I'm going to try to leave it kind of light out here. You still got sort of some plating going on. But it's, it's going to be more affected by the limb of this planet. So I want to be kind of careful how I'm dealing with it. So I'm going to put in all the plating this way and then not have to worry about it the other thing is we have to remember there's lights coming out of these front windows So we, we want to definitely be careful about how we deal with those front windows. Every time I say something like she's coming along nicely, I always feel like then, you know, the narrator says, and then tragedy struck. It's like, yeah. Mm. If you're wondering about the registry, I know you totally were. All of you guys out there were wondering what happened to the registry. I'm actually going to put that in. more water down because I want to get in here but I don't want it to be super dark out here which I kind of want to thin these guys down a little bit It'll give me a little more gradient effect going on there which also helps a lot See how light it is. Very light up here. That's what we're after. It's directly in the sunlight. What we're effectively doing is just making it so that the light's reflecting off of this properly and it kind of looks cool. It gives us sort of a nice effect. Going back in, take some of this gray, darken this out. We're darkening it out because we're coming back in up here. Right at the bridge. We're going to bridge all up here. And this guy probably is dark. Contrast. So what's going on down here? This guy will be light, so I'm not going to worry about him. Right back here, that will be dark. There's 
plates up there, right here, these even light. Hello, Michael. Okay, go ahead and get, I need to get something in here. So I can't see your commentary there, Michael. Hello, Michael. Welcome to the show. How are you today? Just like that. And just adding some depth to what's going on on this. Now, for this other side of the saucer, we don't want to create a doing okay. We're going to also look at some of the lighting sources that are here. The thing is, there's a light coming this way, but there really isn't like going this way, except so, I'm going to go ahead and make this pretty dark down here. Okay, so we're going to go light. Pretty dark. So there we go, we're getting pretty, you know, just trying to kind of keep it. It gives good contrast as well to the upper part of the saucer. I know you desperately want up here to be into, say, my paints and stuff, and I get that. But it's not going to happen, you know that, right? Just saying. I think George is apologizing because he has been a certifiable pest all morning. over things. Doing damage to stuff. All morning. That's been you, little fuzz noodle, wherever you went. Where are you? Again.
So, okay. It gives it some honey contrast along the bottom there. Really good. Looks good and solid and contrasty. Makes it look nice and settled in. Anything that's on the underside of the ship is going to be a darker color with sort of a limb light. And we see limb like an arm, but it's also the same thing as limb as in like the limb of the planet. using the sketching motion to get it to be straight so that it doesn't wobble. Yeah, watercolors have a wonderful, wonderful chaotic tendency. Something I really like is one of the reasons why I like watercolors so much. Um, but that chaos also means that it's hard to control the brushes. It's hard to control the paint coming off of the brushes. So there's a certain amount of, let me go back and just clean it up. It needs to happen from time to time. Not so bad. And here I thought I was going to trash this picture. I had said yesterday that, you know, come watch me destroy this picture. And I worried that people would get kind of the wrong idea of what I was after on that one. I believe we should all make mistakes, because if we don't make mistakes, we won't learn. So, I absolutely intend to do my best on this but even if i mess it up which is entirely plausible it's a success because i've learned and that is valuable Also could be a good marketing strategy, I guess, if you know people are willing to watch to see if a guy messes it up. Kind of funny. There we go. So I'm just giving a, a nice shine to the side of the, the warp myself here. Wash this thing just a little bit here. I'm gonna level it out. Okay. What are you doing? Is he knocking? No, the pest control guy. Oh. oh. Of course it's a pest control guy. Everybody's always here. Okay. Hang on, guys. I know that we're...
I tell everybody that I work from 9 to 11, and you can guarantee that everybody will be here between 9 and 11 <laughs> every time. Okay. Yes, it's the fail faster theory. Keep failing, but fail faster. Fail forward. That's where lower decks go for trains. Lower decks. Lower decks. Okay. Okay. There we go. There. Now that we've laid sort of this gray down, start getting into Pepper's Blue here. Okay. I'm going to take this. I'm just going to introduce this blue in here. And this is just going to give depth to parts of this ship. All right? I'm going to introduce some of his blue various panels and just give some depth here. Okay. Okay. It's going to be uh, harder to see this. This is a very subtle thing we're doing over here. Kind of adding in this blue to different panels. But the subtlety gives it less than just an average look of gray. Kind of going through here, and all I'm doing is just smoothing out a lot of this. Introducing this blue, smoothing out the, the hard line here. sections of the ship that really should be offset by some of this blue right through here. And I might need to get a different brush for this. Okay. 
there is a, an artist that I follow who's very big on uh, these flat brushes and using the flat brushes. I can see why. It's definitely very controlled. I don't want control over this brush. I can either hit the edge like this and go in there. Just more for the tight areas that I really need to. Wow, went down to three frames or something. What's going on? Seriously, like nothing over here. That's pretty brutal. Sorry about this, guys. I'm gonna be sad if you guys are like, yeah, it's always been like this. I'm like, well, no wonder I don't have to do watching the show. Hopefully it's going to get better over here. The quality is really low. It's very hard for me to see what I'm doing. That's right. Most of you guys are probably just join me to do a thing. Do your own thing anyway. Which is all right. All right. There we go. I'm just going to clean the brush off over here. I'm going to change colors. Okay. 
Now, I have some seriously sparkly gold, which I could use for this, but I'm actually kind of thinking I'm using the copper here. And these are very, these are specifically Japanese um, paints. And I've got a gold right here, but I feel like this copper is a better color. So I'm going to take the copper. It's going to take a bit of work to get this copper working. So we're going to kind of get in here because it, 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 it takes some time to activate it in some water. Get kind of moving. All right. I'm going to go in here on this. Now that it's activated, though, I'm also going to try to get the saucer or the sensor array on our horizon, which we can actually touch today. There we go. We're bringing up some. Oh, hey, look. It looks like my moment of obnoxiousness is over with internet, whatever, so you can see what we're doing again. Moments of terror. When your internet show decides to go down. Not really like critical. Still showing a little bit of copper right up here at the top of the brush. I don't want that getting into any of the other paints, but at the moment, I think we're pretty okay. So, the other thing I want to do is just kind of introduce some of that goldish, yellowish sort of effect around the rest of the, the rest of the vessel. So, I grab some of my yellow, which is my just yellow ochre, regular yellow ochre. Bring it out here, and we're just gonna introduce this lightly to the rest of the ship. We just want little bits of yellow. Sort of like what we just did with the uh, blue. It implies, you know, some color to the ship. It's got, it's not just, um, Gray, we're going to have some a little bit of color to add to the panel lines. All right. So some of these panels are going to end up being a yellowish in color. Especially right here around the Boussards, I'm going to lighten this area up. And the reason is because in a minute I'm going to paint these red. And when I do, the yellow around the outside is going to lend to the appearance that they're glowing. Okay. 
So we'll put these right as we're on the reserve collectors. This yellow in this area. It gives it the true effect that it is glowing in some way. will start giving effect to things too in a minute. We'll bring not just the yellow down from around the outside of the hussards, we're also going to put red on the reflection of the grid down here because they're bouncing off of the hull. The lights are all going to be bouncing off of the hull back here. So we're just lightening up the area around it. <clears throat> Real quick, I'm just gonna tap in here. Now I've done that, we've got to kind of go into the moment of the Bussards. We're going to, have to talk about the Bussards. Now, Bussard collectors, generally speaking, are red, obviously, but they're going to be pink to some degree because, you know, they'll be red around the edges and then we'll get highlights to pink off of the metal. So I get to use my new pink that I just got. So let's talk about my pinkest pink get it over here to visit okay so we're bringing in this pinkest pink we're gonna it's time to take a quick break kind of hit on the edges here time for us to take a quick break in just a second but not until after i do this Start with the pink. We're going to want to bring this pink in. I'll be mixing in red at some point, but first, kind of want to get the accent started with the pink. Okay, very quickly guys, let's take a quick break. So park the brush and stand up. Oh, stand up. Come over here. Oh, man. All right. So we're moving along. I noticed my lights have turned funky over here. We're moving along with this just fine. It's going well. I actually am kind of happy with it. So let's go on ahead and real quickly. Oh, my goodness. Stand up. Stretch. <clears throat> that means you too, Michael. If you're if you're sitting down, <coughs> if you're sitting down working, you need to stand up and stretch. Pop your back. Oh, that's so good. 
quick little Jones. Justin, here you have Today, it's Grand Central Station here at the, the Casa de Davis. We've got a, um, <laughs> I take your word for it, but don't think I'm not giving you the look. Anyway, head back over there to the work. All right. is pink is still pinking. Okay. Kind of, we're just kind of adding chaos to the to the Bussard collector here. Okay, same thing over here. We're gonna do the same thing. looks good, but we're going to do red on top of this. We do that. The pink is just to give us some depth. in here. Yeah, interest with the water. Because now we're going to go into my red. And my red is pretty dark. And so when we add this red, we want to, that's why we put the pink in first, because this red is pretty serious. Um, it's not messing around red. So we're going to It's not messing around red, but right now it's messing around. That's the thing. I'm ending up doing sort of a technique called wet on wet. more than I bargained for with that on this side. So I'm going to push this out. The wonderful thing about watercolors, watercolors are a wonderful thing. There is a certain amount of ability to erase. And I'm winning.
Introducing just enough red to indicate that there's bounce off of the hull of the ship. This is sort of what we're looking for here. We're looking to, to bounce the hull. A little bit too much red going on here, so I'm going to blend it back in with the yellow. And that gives us a nice glow off the, the hull of the ship without it being, you know, overt. Now it looks like the, the light of the Lusards is reflecting off the lemon of the, of the saucer. That's exactly what we're after here. That's a big glowy ball. So we got a lot of glowy ball effect going on here. Like a Lucille ball effect, but different. Now, there are pennants on the side and on the side of the of the secondary hull, the engineering hall, and on the side of the uh, the warp missiles. So we're going to have to go in there with the pennants here in a second and do that. For that one, though, I want to use a much thinner brush. So I'm going to use this guy here. He's very thin. You can see it's a very thin brush. Um, and so we're going to use this guy. I'm going to be direct with this. That is direct as it gets. Those pennants are not easy to draw. thing we want on here is water. We don't want water on this. these pennants. There we All right. While we're here and while we have this under control and we're in red, the thing I kind of also want to do is sort of implied impact. Just implying these impellers. Mm -hmm. 
I'm looking at the brush and looking at where we are on this, kind of feeling a little bit more like uh, this guy's got a little too close to the center. So I'm going to do this. The center of the nacelle is right there. So that's where we want the impeller to stop. All right. I'm feeling like the gray lady is getting there. It's getting much closer. Hello, Brent. We have a gray lady. Isn't she lovely? Sort of moving along nicely. So i take some of this water out of here. Now, usually the gray lady sort of refers to the classic Enterprise, not the Discovery version of the Enterprise, but that's okay. I have this silver, and I'm kind of thinking of putting the silver in, right? I've never played with this silver before. Sort of feels kind of like, what's the worst that can happen? And then we just completely destroy the picture. But you know what? If we don't try, we'll never know, right? So the silver looks warmer to me. So she looks like she's going to be kind of interesting if I add her to certain panels. It'll give a different degree. But more importantly, the drawing will have a sparkle to it in these areas because that silver has uh, So she's, she is sort of a blue-green, and I added that blue-green in here on her uh, opposite colors. I guess you should see her opposing colors. I don't know. Um, but I was trying to get to sort of an, an operating gray to see whether that would work. I had seen somebody kind of do the uh, Enterprise D, and the D is generally eggshell. That's the color that they call that, and it's a robin eggshell, so it's a, it's a light, light blue. Um, I was kind of thinking about doing that, but I'm kind of trying to see what she looks like just warmed up. You know, I'm kind of brought to more of a... Uh, a, a grayish. Kind of get her into this gray mode here, which I don't know. I'm liking it. It's it's more patchwork feeling, but she feels a little bit more like she's been flying around for a while. She's been doing stuff, you know, living the good life, the life of a starship. I also feel kind of like Discovery iteration of her was very grayish. She was like a very gray critter. You know? All right. I'm just going to warm this up a little She has seen and done things. Tannhauser gates and stuff.
That way the light comes in here, but it gets brighter right through there. I don't know, she's looking kind of cool to me. I'm liking it. Here I was thinking I was going to totally destroy this piece. I haven't totally destroyed it yet, but give me time. <laughs> the day is young. Hold my beer. Hold my rack to Gino. And we need to put in the intercoolers. Intercoolers on Federation starships are always blue. And the good news is that they glow. I like that they put the intercoolers back in on the Discovery Enterprise. Star Wars approved. They put the intercoolers back in on the inter on, on uh, the Discovery Enterprise, and she looks good. These uh, intercoolers, of course, were. I'm going to purposely kind of break out of the boundaries a little here because I want this to look like it's glowing. I have like 72 different shades of blue. And I feel like I'm not getting the bright enough blue in here. This guy looks bluer, so we'll get in here with him. Tap that guy in. Tap, 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 tap. I'm going ahead and we'll let this just sort of bleed out through across here a little bit. And then I'll come back in with some water and just sort of tap it down. And blend those in. And while I'm blending these paints in, um, it's merging the blue and the gray together, which makes it look a little bit more like it's a glow, which is good. We have some patch up work that I want to do now. Because looking at where we are on this, there's some areas that really could stand to have a darker shade of gray go for it. So, we had before, we brought in this Davies Gray that I've been using, which is sort of a blue-gray to, 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 to uh, address your where's the blue. Um, it's a blue-gray that I'm using. It's a, a very cool gray. I'm just going to tap in here on this fin. And underneath here. All right, we want to kind of indicate that things are sort of, there we go, do that. That'll help us a lot. We'll come in under here a little bit and just kind of darken this area, darken this area. And this gives it just a little bit more of a sort of a shadow going on the underside of that. 
on the underside of these you know, the Broussard collector stand or uh, standoffs and the holders together. You guys can get a technical manual on a starship here if you want to watch this show. There we go, just like that. Okay. Now that we've done that, we're going to also need to, as usual, tap underneath here. So. There we go. Yeah, I haven't done as much damage to this as I thought it would. I was saying earlier that uh, there are, we are actually in an amazing world for Star Trek. For us Trekkies, life is wonderful. We've got season three of Lower Decks that's being recorded right now. Season two of Lower Decks is in production. So there's going to be a new season of Lower Decks like any day now. Not really, probably it's going to be in August, but that's okay. Then we've got season four of Discovery is in the can and being uh, being edited even as we speak. Seasons two and three of Picard are being worked on together. They're being filmed at the same time and they've started principal production on Strange New Worlds, which is this wonderful bird. So I am so excited. It is a beautiful time to be a Trekkie. Um, it is the awesomest time to be a Trekkie. We have so much Star Trek out there. First Contact Day was really cool. They've gotten really good with these First Contact Days where all of us just sit there and watch endless amounts of interviews from everybody, um, which is really nice. So, yeah, it's a great time to be a Trekkie. All right. And thank you for posting that, my dear friend. Because you posted that. And I saw it, but didn't I don't think I didn't click it or anything like that. So Yes, it's, but it is a wonderful time to be a Trekkie. All right. Now we're going to do some of the hard stuff. Because what I really want to do is give some that edge on the front there. Right through here. We're going to be working on that. You know, I heard about a new Stargate show as well, and I thought that was pretty cool. I mean, I have had sort of problems with the Stargate universe because, of course, my favorite character was Jack. <laughs> so... Okay, 
So I put in that, and now I'm regretting it. I'm regretting my life choices. It's too wet. So we're going to tap it out of it there. I'm going to come back in when it's less wet. Because right, now what we're really doing is this. It may be hard for you guys to see what I'm doing here, but I'm trying to put it in as a, a pin point, sort of. It is a really great time. I mean, I know that many people dislike the new Star Wars movies and stuff, and I appreciate that. Um, but we've got new Star Wars got the Mandalorian, we've got, you know, so much good stuff out there right now that we can, you know, Loki is running right now, I haven't seen Loki yet, I'll watch that, but I mean, I've never in my life had a point where I had so much geeky stuff to watch that I literally was too busy to watch all the geeky stuff. Generally, I had always been of the, well, I've seen all the geeky stuff now, and so I'll go back to work and do my stuff, and then I'll come back and watch the other geeky stuff later, next week, when there's more geeky stuff. And there's just so much. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the Book of Fat. Um, I mean, honestly, though, I love Grogu just like every other geeky, stupid person like me. Grogu is the best. So, I mean, I'm looking forward to the Book of Fett a whole lot because that's kicked butt and awesome. But the truth of the matter is that although oh yeah, we watched an episode of The Bad Batch and that was pretty kick butt. And so, I mean, there's been some really good stuff out there. I'm pretty impressed. You're still coming out. So one of the things I love about these internal water brushes, ones that have their own internal water reservoirs, is that you can use the water, water brush to press out water when inside my or when in the the water in my water dish my my paint puck yes but if you've read the books that makes absolute sense because spoilers book seven is like 30 years later so they either have to age the entire crew, except for Naomi, of course, because she's a belter. Or they would have to um, they'd have to do something about maybe recasting them. So it's entirely plausible though that we'll get season seven and eight. 30 years from now. That might happen. And if it does, I hope you all remember me. <laughs> I don't think I would be around there. Man, the expanse, though. Holy cow. That, sh that book, that show, the whole thing, boy, does that get me every time just so good that is my kind of story and show the last book i was reading which was book eight i'm actually sad to find out that they intended to stop the expanse series at book nine 
So the last one I was reading was book eight, and it was mind-boggling. <laughs> I was like, I don't even know how to handle this. Hey, Pepper. The mystery blue looks really good. You can see it a little bit right here. I've been putting it in the panel work of the of the ship. So I've been kind of popping panels around with that mystery blue. It looks really nice. It's a clean blue. It looks great for exactly what I'm using it for, which is panel work. <laughs> That's what I knew I was going to need it for. It's a starship. But yeah, it looks beautiful up here. In fact, I'm going to put some of it right down here. So, also, Pepper, your rye bread is a major hit. It has been the breakfast of choice a couple of times now. So, I want you to know that. The good thing about putting you guys all on the screen, though, is you can read each other talking to each other now whenever Pepper, who's coming in on Twitch, talks to Brent, who's on Facebook, who's talking to Pepper, who's on Twitch. There we go. Now, now we're cooking with Mazzola over here. She looks good. Good solid ship. All right. Pepper, are you going to be with me tomorrow for uh, Friday check in? Friday chicken? Chicken Friday? <laughs> I also put some of the hot pink out here on these Bussards. That looks pretty cool. How you doing on your deadlines? Probably not as good as you'd want to be. I'm assuming. Okay, that may be. The boy is having a, a, a guest over today. He's going to have a, a guest date. So, righty. You thought I was being Picard or just Picarded in general? All right, let's get a bigger brush out. Let's swap these so they're in the right brush. Thing. All right. Let's get a bigger brush. It's a much bigger brush. I'm going to start doing sort of the... Good morning, Donald. Welcome to the show. We're painting the silver lady. I guess she's more silver. Okay, so looking at what I've got up here, I'm kind of wanting to think that just looking at the planet, in general, I'm kind of feeling like maybe my planet needs to be green. Um, could be red. The space is going to be a, a varying degree of blues and purples out here, so I'm not as worried necessarily about what's going on out there, but hey, you know? But the planet could be a bunch of this green, because I've got this cadmium deep, I've got this bamboo green. really kind of want to work on... Uh, 
th this new one, which I put in for Viridian Hue, is actually a phthalo green, and I kind of want to play with that. So I'm really big on my my phthalos. So let's let's start with my phthalo green, and which is really like greener than I thought it would be. Which is all right. And we'll kind of go in here, make this planet all greeny and stuff. I feel like I should say long time no three all the, uh, often now. Kind of like that. Long time no three. Okay, so I'm not going to go too far out in here. And no reason to go all the way down. I'm just looking at the Enterprise. So, I mean, the, the point of this is the Enterprise and the data loss up there at the top. So. I could have just put this in here. I'm going to try to go brighter as I head towards the edge of the planet over here, and darker as I head off the, the back of the planet on that side, obviously. Oh, you have to go to a funeral, though. Sorry to hear that, my friend. I mean, intellectually, I know we're approaching that age. Intellectually. But man, it's still rough. Sort of, right? Warp streets and warp trails. What will probably happen is relatively soon here, we'll be coming up on 11 o'clock show will be over um and 
we will head on out and I'll just let this dry and hopefully keep your paws crossed. George won't get into it. Really need even a bigger brush than this. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go on ahead and get a bigger brush. I'll put this brush out. Get more of a wallpaper brush for this. And we'll use uh, so here's my miscellaneous things brush. And we can use larger brushes for this. So we've got this guy. We've probably got this guy. This is pro probably my better bet for this mess. Um, so let's go on ahead and do that. We're going to take this guy and get him relatively wet. Put him over here. We're going to tap into this paint. We're going to grab a lot of this paint here. And this will allow us to get a much more sort of wallpapery effect going for this. which is good because I really don't want to draw attention to this background. I want people paying attention to the enterprise and the horizon, right? So I really don't want them paying attention to the background. It needs to be something that's just there and we're aware of, but it's not that big of a deal. We'll bring these big brushes out later Big flat brushes are very, very useful to have. Like I said, I'm trying to get lighter as I head out to the limb of the planet. So I'm adding more water as I come out here and adding more ink as I go this way. Simple things, not simple anymore, that's true. All right, so kind of moving along here. Got a lot of this kind of going on out here, and I've kind of put this around the outside of this horizon. I've decided she's the horizon, but she really doesn't have to be the horizon. interesting because Star Trek lore has sort of gotten kind of scrambled about what the horizon is and whether she's a, a Daedalus class or whether she's a, a J-class freighter. Mostly because the term J-class J class has been sort of interchangeably used for this particular guy. So it's kind of difficult to tell whether um, 
whether that was the intention was to with, with you know it's kind of hard to tell who who has what here so I'm going to try to water this down quite a bit when we get out here so that we're not any more light to the edge of the, of the planet out here Here we go. I have a very like bizarre love of these old Daedalus class ships. And always have. I just love the old Daedalus class. Ship. Ridiculous looking. Just always that sort of. Uh, I love these these like weird little Daedalus class ships. And it may be because it is it is originally a Jeffries design, and Matt Jeffries did. Ultimately, you know, do the design for the Daedalus class, and that's cool. And so that is probably part of it. I have sort of a love of all Matt Jeffries' designs. Not to say. I don't have a, a love for John Eves, of course, obviously, since I've got a John Eves Enterprise in here. I met Jeffrey's Starship. sealed in all of the ships the good news is by next week what I will do is somewhere along the line here we're going to have to put this I mean once it dries today and it'll dry really nicely in the next hour or so I'll put it under a cover and then press down on it Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of wonder if that's what Prodigy is going to be. Mm. Prodigy, Brent. I forgot to mention Prodigy. <laughs> Prodigy is also out there on the Star Trek to-do list. There we go. Coming along really nicely. Coming up on the end of the show here in just a second. I want to make sure that my brushes are all clear, but I also want to kind of get rid of some of this. Like I said, I don't want to draw attention to the planet. So I'm going to get rid of some of the water stains that are going on. Usually, you know me, I absolutely adore my water stains because they look great and they give a certain amount of chaos. But in this instance, they are kind of distracting. I'm just going through and erasing 
thin. Making it a little bit less obvious what's going on here. So if this is a thalo, and I'm not sure it is, I think this is not the thalo green. I think this is our cobalt green yellow, which, or it might be what I use as my bamboo green. It looks cool. I like sort of a, a drab, drabs work. Um, I'm gonna go back through here real quick though, and I'm gonna darken out quite a bit out here. I want it to feel like it's getting darker out there edge of this planet. We're about to go into night over here. So I'm going to direct paint in here. Right. And now it's starting to give sort of a feel of roundness to it. being much more direct and give myself sort of a nice planetary edge. There we go. I think so too. I'm actually kind of surprised. I really was expecting much more damage. Um, <laughs> I was expecting her to look pretty ugly and messed up, and instead she's looking pretty good and pretty solid. Um, I'm pretty happy. So it looks pretty nice. Uh, I was not expecting it. As I was saying at the top of the show, uh, I, I'm not being fatalistic here. I, I believe firmly in uh, failing faster, failing harder, um, and then getting the failure out of the way. And so I was expecting to fail so that I could learn from the mistake and continue on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my whole battle plan is that you guys will see this be finished next Watercolor Wednesday. I'm going to put uh, this sketchbook on top of it in just a little bit to flatten it back down again so that it'll stop crinkling up. And then we will do space and the Daedalus next watercolor Wednesday, and I'll just let it sit under compression for the next little while. Um, and I, and then we can add some chaos to it because it needs chaos. Every picture needs a little bit of chaos. What good is it if there's no chaos and stuff like that? But for right now, we're doing great. I think it looks solid. It looks like a, a good piece. It's working well. So, I'm going to do that, and hopefully I will have some people, like Pepper, on the show tomorrow. But I know that Pepper is on a deadline, so I'm only going to lightly rib him. <laughs> I'm not going to seriously taunt him, because there's really no point in that. That's just going to make him sad. So, <laughs> hmm. so we will put this together, and we will finish this piece next Wednesday. Donald... I wish you well on your journey. I hope that uh, that the journey, the the friend that you're you're sending off, has fair weather and following seas. And so that's the way that goes. And for the rest of you guys, it was good to have you here, Michael. I enjoy your company, 
And it was good to have you here, Brent. I also enjoy your company. Thank you very much. I'm going to go on ahead and sign us off for the day. And I'll see you all tomorrow morning for artist check-in. And so until then, keep your eyes in the stars. Goodbye. Good night.